Hey ladies, let's talk about love. I'm Kim. And I'm Maddie. And we're Daily Titan's finest love doctors. So to celebrate Women's History Month, the love doctors are here with a special edition dedicated to the ladies. Whether you're single or in a relationship, we hope answering these questions will bring clarity to your love life or be the fuel that sparks a new flame. So we took some questions um, from Instagram. We asked some of our followers to shoot us some questions that they would have about love. And we also asked the Daily Titans newsrooms, female editors and mm -hmm. reporters, if they have any questions about love for us. Here's okay. what we've gathered. So our first question is, do you think checking your partner's phone is weird? What about liking other girls' pics? Hmm, you want to share this one off, Dr. Ken? Thank you, Dr. Maddie. I think I will <laughs> uh, take this one. Um, well, checking my partner's phone. Well, as someone who just got into a relationship, mm. I felt like, I feel like I never really wondered what my partner was up to on their phones. And I feel like in our generation, it's like, it's a thing where we have like all of our information on our phone, right? And so like, I think it's hilarious when people literally like try to act toxic and be like, oh, what you doing on your phone? Cause mm -hmm. like, I'd be doing that as a joke. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I feel like whenever so. I, get into a relationship or I'm with someone, I trust them enough to uh, know that like if they need to tell me something, then they'll just tell me. Mm -hmm. There's no need for me to snoop around on their phone or them to do the same to me because I would want them to trust me the same way. And so oh, it's totally. that, yeah, it's that whole thing where it's just like, kind of like trust your partner, trust that your partner trusts you type of mm -hmm. thing. You shouldn't have to look at your partner's phone and then even as far as like liking other girls' pictures, there's no like malicious intent in doing that. What about when you're liking the homies' pictures, you're liking your girls' pictures? It's like, mm -hmm. what's wrong with that? Yeah. There, I don't plus, think there's anything yeah, wrong with that. And the other thing on that note is like, you don't know the relationship. Because like, what if, what if that's just a good friend of his? Like mm -hmm. you, again, like the whole malicious intent thing, like, it's a harmless like, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, I really don't see. And especially, okay, I get the whole thing. Like, I get it. We all know the IG models who are, like, jealous. I of, was going to say, because what yeah. if your boyfriend liked an uh, IG model's pictures? Mm -hmm. What if they, like, commented and was like, hard eyes, hard eyes, hard eyes? <laughs> that's, okay, so in my opinion, that's that's kind of another thing. Like, mm. that's, I guess that, that would be cause for concern, if there's any at all. Mm -hmm. But again... <laughs> you have to look at this through like the lens of reality the chances of anything happening with that are s slim to none like you're in a relationship with this person obviously they love you and you know if they're liking some pics of someone that they like don't even know in real life I mean it's how much harm can that really do to your <laughs> exactly, relationship exactly <laughs> And if you're feeling so insecure about it <laughs> that you don't let your man like other girls' pictures, that mm -hmm. sounds more like a you problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say I would say you might need to work on your own self confidence. Like obviously there's something lacking there. Like if you know if you're getting insecure about that, then maybe that's something like that's like a deeper issue. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? I get it. I get it. I'm not judging. Like, we've, I think we've all been there at some point of been like a little bit jealous, but you know, just talk to them about it. If it's really something that bothers you, then you should bring it up rather than just letting it like fester and get worse. Perfect. <laughs> Looks like we got that cleared away. Yeah. Uh, would you like to take on the next question? Sure thing. Um, so, next question is How do you shoot your shot via social or in person? Um, well, let's see. Thank God for the pandemic so we don't have to shoot our shot in person anymore. Right? <laughs> Honestly, the pandemic has really saved the people who just are not comfortable with shooting a shot in person. Mm -hmm. and, and that's totally fine. But Especially in yeah. an age saturated with media, social, social networking mm -hmm. apps. Mm -hmm. And now with the pandemic, I feel like it really is encouraged for you to shoot your shot. 
um, in other ways, especially if you are more of an introvert. Maybe mm -hmm. you just want to tell someone that you think their, <laughs> their latest <laughs> post is awesome. Maybe they just posted a selfie and you're completely mesmerized. Go yeah. ahead and tell them, hey, I was mesmerized by this selfie that you posted. Right. <laughs> be like, or be like, wow, like if, hey, if they post like their work on their social media, be like, wow, I really love that piece. You know? <laughs> Yeah, really get in there. Do your research. <laughs> this is not an invitation to stalk anyone. No, 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 yeah. no, no. Don't do that. Yeah, that's crossing the line. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't don't be creepy. No. But be nice, be cordial, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be yourself. They'll they'll like you for you. And yeah. if they don't, then they're not the one for you, honey. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Go for it and like I don't know, if you're really that scared, then you just have to get it over with. Honestly. Like it's <laughs> you do. Scary. It's scary, but do it. Like, what do you have to lose? Like, you already don't have them. If you know they reject you, then you're just gonna be back in the same place that you were before. So it's really not that bad. I'm the type of person where when I have feelings for someone, I have to tell them. And as much as I don't want to ruin a friendship, like that's that's why it's easier to shoot your shot with strangers. So mm -hmm. if the person you're crushing on is a stranger, definitely encourage you to shoot your shot with them because yeah, what's gonna go happen? They're gonna leave your life. They weren't in it anyway. It's <laughs> good point, good point. Yeah. So but like if it's with a friend or like something like that, as it was in my situation, mm -hmm. um, I was basically I guess I got really lucky because I could also feel that like he really cared about me. He would do a lot of stuff for me as a friend that was a little sus like, hmm, mm -hmm. you know, a guy wouldn't just do that for a girl if he doesn't like them. Mm -hmm. For example, literally hanging out with me every day. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I feel like, like this many days in a row, this is getting really yeah. Good. Like, seriously, he just do like a lot of you know, like the love languages, acts of service. Mm -hmm. Like, he just did a lot of things for mm -hmm. me that I felt like not just any guy would do. Right. And like, even though we were like kind of best friends, I also didn't want to, or like, I didn't really let that cloud um, my judgment on mm -hmm. whether or not I should. Um, kind of just like tell him my feelings or not because I feel like when you have feelings for someone like you deserve the chance to say how you feel and you know depending on where they're at maybe they want to hear it too it's, honestly yeah it could be a win win or a lose lose that's, that's, you know, <laughs> it's always yeah, a risk that's, you'll that's take true, that's true but like I feel like I feel like most of the time like if you're confessing your feelings for someone like either way I don't really you're not gonna get like a harsh reaction to that. And I'm not saying that's gonna happen all the time, but if you don't shoot your shot, then you're gonna miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So maybe True. one of the shots that you do take are gonna end like a rom-com movie and you deserve that. <laughs> we all deserve our rom-com movie romance. Yes, we Let's do. Be real. Let's be real. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, the next one we did answer in our, our article. Yeah, the we answered a few questions in the written story that we published at the mm -hmm. end of March. Um, one of these questions was, this is probably my favorite, should I be friends with my ex? Answer, no. Case closed. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh no, yeah we 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 don't have anything else to say about yeah. that all right so the question after that was dr maddie yeah. how do you know when he loves you you know i feel like i think it might be different for everyone depending on like the situation mm -hmm. like just knowing knowing your partner but I think you kind of just get the feeling <laughs> like as much as as much as it's like oh he hasn't said I love you yet like some people take time to get there mm -hmm. you know because some people have like a harder time saying those words because mm -hmm. they carry a lot of weight um definitely but, yeah I think depending on like how they treat you it could people say I love you in different ways and that's the whole thing going back to like the love languages like you know your love language could be like you said acts of service it could be like I don't know, quality time. And so like, if, you know, 
if they like doing things for you or like they want to spend a lot of time with you, blah, 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 depending on what it is, like you'll know, you'll know. When you say I love you, those are three really heavy words like Dr. Maddie was saying. <laughs> and so don't like say it with the right intentions. If you're only saying I love you to hear it back, you probably don't love them that much. Mm -hmm. You should tell them you love them because you want them to know how much you care about them. Mm -hmm. And you want them to like, when you say the words I love you to someone, those words are going to have an impact on them. And ideally, it should be a positive one. So absolutely. Ha heed caution. <laughs> the next question, kind of a close one to the previous one is, right. um, is he the one? Look, <laughs> we, we already answered this a little bit in our article, but basically, if you're really contemplating this enough to submit this question, you already know. And you clearly don't. And you clearly, <laughs> you clearly don't think he's the one. Yeah. Um, so we did talk a little bit earlier about um, shooting your shot online, which mm -hmm. really leads us to this question right here. Mm -hmm. Love and Tinder, myth or reality? Yeah, so from my perspective, I, you know, through my various research as a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Just dating around. You know. <laughs> from, my, from my past studies in my life, <laughs> I would personally say that it's a myth. <laughs> just um, love yeah love and tinder or any dating app really um but then again let me preface it by saying that i think depending on the app you're on definitely a different experience you know so like you have your your tinders your bumbles your hinge <laughs> your hinges your hinges <laughs> <laughs> and then like i don't know I think there's like a few others out there, but those are more geared towards like, I think like an older audience that's like, okay, I'm down to get serious. Mm -hmm. I think when you, I honestly don't, I haven't done any research on like the demographics of these apps, but just from my opinion, I feel like the apps are mainly younger people. And usually that leads to less serious relationships. Yeah. But. I, I definitely agree based mm -hmm. on my uh, very brief studies on Hinge, Bumble, and <laughs> Tinder for the couple weeks I was single. Um, <laughs> I found that these dating apps were very disappointing. Mm -hmm. And if you did happen to find the one person that didn't just want to hook up and then ghost you, mm -hmm. then it they most likely were... Um, how do I say this nicely? Just not the one I was looking for. <laughs> like, you think these dating apps would really cater to your preferences because of all the listings in their bio. So not only are you swiping based on appearance, but mm -hmm. you're also kind of swiping based on what they're looking for in their bio, right. maybe other physical appearances or other hobbies they have because those usually show up in the bios too, right? And so you're swiping based on all these things, but once you talk to them, you realize that they still are the first this thing from what you're looking for and so yeah. to save yourself from an entirely disappointing experience i just say try to go out go <laughs> not in your backyard actually try to go <laughs> out somewhere and try to meet someone shoot your shot with that cute barista mm -hmm. at that one coffee shop you always get coffee at like why not yeah exactly like i think we forget i mean especially now in the pandemic it's exacerbated this even more but we forget like who's around us and mm -hmm. like the options of people that are already kind of in our circles rather than, you know, yeah, like going on a date with someone that like might be a little bit like out of reach in mm -hmm. terms of like living farther away from you, like blah, blah, blah. Like you could just get to know the people that are around you because like they may pleasantly surprise you. So our next question that we also answered previously is when do I distinguish between caring for my partner and caring for myself? Well, Dr. Maddie, we all know mm -hmm. that caring for yourself is caring for your partner. Mm -hmm. If you're in a healthy relationship, then you and your partner should be 
communicating and ideally like know the ways to love each other can sense when the other person's maybe a little off balance or something like that so having a partner means that you both are going to be there for each other through your best and your worst and sometimes when like you're feeling at your worst or your partner is feeling at their worst then it's going to be hard to be there for them in the way that you want to be and in those cases the best thing to do is just to communicate with them and talk to them about it so you guys can learn how to deal with each other's mood swings and emotions or any other issues that may arise like we know that the term communication is key Mm -hmm. it's super cliche but it's a cliche for a reason (laughs) so make sure they know where your heart is at where your mind is at and that really helps to just avoid miscommunication and and like a lot of other very avoidable things in a relationship absolutely and going along with that like sometimes like you really do have to care for yourself before you're able to like fully care for another person um and yeah like you have to give yourself that energy to be like okay like i'm gonna work on myself and like you can still be there for the other person but like we said you just need to talk about it you know like you need to talk about how you're feeling because i know um like especially i keep on bringing back to this but like during this time like i feel like all the issues we've experienced in like these little parts of life even in relationships they've like I don't want to say worsened, but they've just become like more evident to us, Mm -hmm. you know, because we've all faced struggles like in this past year and that includes relationships. And I think that, you know, it's important to care for yourself and like care for your partner, especially when they're going through a hard time, because there's been a lot of those. But let them know like, hey, like I'm kind of going through something, too. And you guys can like work it out together. On to the next question. Um, We have, how do you ask, what are we? Well, let's start here. You ask, what are we? (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah, let's be real. We know that the there is only one acceptable answer to this question. And if he doesn't give you that answer, Mm -hmm. then he ain't the one. But also... If you're nervous about the whole what are we question, then let's think about where your relationship is at right now. Mm -hmm. Do you feel comfortable and secure in whatever relationship you have with this person currently? Or do you feel insecure about it because you know or are probably suspecting that he doesn't want a relationship? And like we've said before, if that person can't give you a clear answer, there's no relationship to define. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, in my experience, I tend to just make the decisions rather than just wonder and be confused and anxious thinking about what we are when I could literally just define it myself. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> saying go up to them and be like, hey, you're mine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a little possessive. But like something that I've always done is just like, hey, I'm not talking to anyone else. It's okay if you are, or maybe if it's not okay, you can say Mm -hmm. it's okay if um, it wouldn't be okay with me if you're not talking to anyone else. So if you're not ready for this, then let me know. And just something like that, you know, just like say, instead of asking them, like letting them make the decision about your relationship for mm-hmm. you just make the decision yourself mm-hmm. you're a you're a strong powerful woman you can be like hey um i am not talking to anyone else i don't want you to be talking to anyone else are we doing this or what <laughs> yeah. and they can give you an answer just like that or if you are in the exploring stages still maybe you can be like hey i am talking to someone else and it's like totally fine if you are too but let me know if like you want that to change and Mm -hmm. then you guys can always go from there and so again it's all about communicating and also how we communicate so when you're coming off like that you're really showing them that you're the boss you're not here to play games um on to the next question we also answer this in Mm -hmm. our story um how do you know when it's over oh boy well You know, at this point, like, 
<laughs> if you have to consider like whether or not the relationship is over, you're kind of getting there. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's harsh. I know, like, no one likes a relationship ending. It's a really hard thing. But sometimes, like, if you're getting the feeling that you guys are reaching that point, then you need to be honest with yourself and be honest with where you're at with this person and so that you can figure out kind of where to go from there. Um, and also, most of the time, I think if you're getting that feeling, then the other person also has that same feeling. So it's good to just be honest with them and like talk about it. And yeah, it's better to just communicate because you don't want to be left in the dark or even have them feeling left in the dark about it. And then it could lead to something even worse. So I think you kind of just want to start talking and assess where you two are at in this moment. We are down to our last two questions. Yeah. Um, how do you stop trying to impress someone that hurt you? Oh, that just hurt. Why are you asking <laughs> this us is this? A, yeah, this is a hurtful Are you question. okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, are you good? You good? You good? <laughs> um, well, I think that, you know, unconsciously or consciously, like, you will always have maybe that person's standards in the back of your head, especially if you're not over them yet, you haven't gotten closure or whatever, mm -hmm. then yeah, it's going to be hard. You're not gonna get over them overnight. And in the same way, like whenever you see them or like have any connection to them on social media, maybe like isn't that feeling, that anxious feeling isn't gonna go away because like the breakup might be fresh or maybe they really hurt you. And it's okay that you feel that way. It's okay to feel like you want to keep impressing them because mm -hmm. they were someone that you were trying to impress for a long time, probably. So my uh, prescription to you is to take your time to really um, think about why you still care about their opinion of you. Why do you still care how you look around them? Why do you care if they saw your Instagram story or not? So once you are able to answer these questions, then you'll be able to find the root of the problem and the reasons why you keep doing what you do or keep thinking the way you do. And once you find the root, you'll be able to reverse it. Honestly, I think the best thing is to just change the person you're trying to impress from your ex to yourself. Impress yourself. Because mm -hmm. the only person that you should try to be better than is you from yesterday. So yeah. keep working on yourself and you realize that you don't need to impress anyone else. And like, again, something else, part of the prescription, I'm just going to add this on. Um, <laughs> if, you know, if you still find yourself like stalking their socials like every now and then, or maybe, you know, like checking to see if they've like looked at your stories, like just remove them. Just take that out of your life. Mm. You don't need it. You really don't. I know that it might be hard because it's something that you've become so accustomed to, but just get rid of it, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and eventually you'll get to that place where they don't even cross your mind anymore. And then our last question mm. comes from the EIC herself. Yes. She asks, how do you find a man who is loyal? Hmm. Um, this is a tough question. Yeah, I think the easiest response is just stop looking for men. <laughs> 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 just... Stop yes. all together. Men, no. <laughs> um, Men, no more. <laughs> okay, a man who is loyal, well, honey, you're just going to have to shoot your shot and hope yeah. that you land on a good one because that is stereotyping all men to be not loyal, but mm -hmm. not all women are loyal either. Mm -hmm. So in the spirit of gender equality, mm -hmm. just find a man or a woman or whatever or whoever you're whoever into. Whoever you're into, yeah. And um, just make it clear that you are looking for an exclusive relationship and mm -hmm. that's how you get that loyalty right off the bat. Um, like I said earlier when uh, to the question with what are we, so just making it clear in the beginning that you ain't playing around mm -hmm. and make sure they know that. So you don't have to bother wasting your time. You won't waste their time. They won't waste their time either. Right. It's just a win-win for everyone. Absolutely. And also, 
remember to trust your intuition. Mm -hmm. Like your intuition is so strong. I think we forget that sometimes. And you know, if you really take the time to really like assess this person, like whoever you're talking to, um, just try to assess like how they are and you'll kind of get your own answer from that. Like, yeah, like we said, not everyone's gonna be loyal, but at the same time, not everyone's gonna be unloyal. So, you know, just look at those things for yourself and kind of assess like, how do I feel about this person? Do I feel like I can trust them? And you'll get your answer. But, you know, whether your relationship desperately needs resuscitation or you're searching for new ways to, you know, get some fun into, like, your non-existent dating life right now, you know, we're here to answer any question you have. So, we just want to remind you that, above all, the most important love you have in your life is yourself. And so, we love you, too. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... We'll be back with another podcast with more of your burning questions about mm -hmm. love. So please feel free to shoot us any questions yeah. via Instagram, email us, Twitter, um, what, what other stuff is out there. Uh, I don't know, write a note in the sky or something. Honestly, anything. Yeah, we'll, we'll take <laughs> we'll it. We'll find it. <laughs> we'll take it, yeah. And yeah. if we don't have an answer to your question, we will look for an answer. Yes, we will do our research like doctors do. Like like doctors do. And we'll yes. give you a prescription like doctors do. Yes, we will. Yeah. Um, we will not perform surgery though. No. Sorry, we, we can't do that. <laughs> That's above our jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you very soon. Remember, Remember to, to take, take your prescriptions. prescriptions.